2008 15-inch MacBook Pro heatsink replacement. Please note that we'll be working with thermal compound paste. Make sure that the MacBook is shut down and flip it over. Battery removal. Unlock the battery lever on the left side and lift up the battery panel. Pull out the battery by its tab. Main cover removal. The main cover is attached with eight Phillips head screws. There are four in the top, three of them long and one short one. The one in the top left is the short one and should be removed first. Then the long three Phillips head screws. On the bottom there are distinctly smaller Phillips head screws and there are four of them. Go ahead and remove those. You can go ahead and lift up and remove the cover now. Logic board removal. Begin by disconnecting the left and the right system fans. They're both held in with three Phillips head screws each. Remove the screws, but don't take them out of the fan. This will be easier to track them. Lift up the fan and disconnect the fan connection to the logic board. Remove the other fan the same exact way. Disconnect it, put it aside. Disconnect the LVDS cable. Lift up on the lever lock and flip it over. Then pull out the cable gently. Be careful, this is a fragile connection. Familiarize yourself with the nine logic board connections going around the contour of the logic board. Disconnect the keyboard backlight first. There is a lever. In this video, the lever is missing because it's been broken off. Pull up the lever and pull out the cable. Disconnect the Wi-Fi and the EyeSight cable by gently pulling it to the left. Disconnect the DVD da data cable. Next, disconnect the right speaker. Disconnect the hard drive cable. Disconnect the sleep light indicator. It has a tiny little lever that you have to pull up. Once it's up, you can go ahead and pull the cable out. Disconnect the trackpad next just by pulling it up. Disconnect the battery life indicator. Pull up the lever and the keyboard and pry it out of the connection as well. Pull up the lever and the express card. Pull that out. Remove the seven Phillips head logic board screws. In this video I point out six and the seventh one is missing on this board. Its location is circled in red. Lift up the board slightly, but not all the way, as there is one more connection before we flip the board over. It's your battery connector. Go ahead, get your screwdriver underneath the connector and pry it out. Now you can lift up and flip over the board. We'll need to disconnect the DC and power board. Heatsink removal. The heatsink is screwed in with eight spring loaded Phillips head screws. Go ahead and remove those eight screws. Now we need to disconnect the heatsink temperature sensor. You can just pry it up. Lift up and clean away the thermal compound from the heatsink, even if you're throwing it away.
between the CPU and the GPU dies. Make sure not to smear the thermal paste on other components. Heatsink installation. Apply two drops of thermal compound on each die. Reinstall the heatsink. Place it over, screw in one spring-loaded screw on top and one on bottom to secure it from going to left to right. Then secure the other six screws. Don't forget to reconnect the heatsink sensor. Logic board installation. Go ahead and connect the DCN power board first. Flip the board over and insert it in at an angle. Push cables out of the way as you insert in the board. We're going to need to make the battery connection first. This is the most difficult connection to make. With tweezers, go ahead and pry in the keyboard connection. This can be easily done by taking out the mid divider. For this video, we will not be taking out the mid divider as this is a professional installation. Push away all the connections. Go around the board and pry out all of the connections. Make sure that nothing is trapped. Once the board is seated correctly, go over each and every one of the connections before screwing in the board prying anything out that was left over. Make sure that every single connection is visible. Position the board. Reinstall the seven Phillips head screws. And again, in this video, I reinstall six screws. <clears throat> Make sure not to forget the seventh screw that I'm labeling with a red circle. Connect the keyboard backlight first. Again, in this example, the backlight lever is broken, but you'll need to pull it up, push the connection in, and put it down. Now connect the Wi-Fi and the iSight cable. Next, connect the DVD data cable. Connect the speaker. Connect the hard drive cable. These cables are just push-in connections. Connect the trackpad. For the sleep indicator, push up the lever and slide the connection in. Once it's all the way in, go ahead and push down on the eyelash.
Hex Connect the battery life indicator. Position it over the socket and click it in. Next, connect the keyboard. Make sure that the eyelash is up when you're sliding it in. If you're having a difficulty with this connection, go ahead and watch the mid divider removal video. This will make it easier to put that in. Reconnect the express card cable, again lifting up the eyelash and sliding it into the connection. Push down the eyelash when you're done. Reconnect the LVDS cable. Make sure that the lock is up. Slide it into the slot. Push the lock lever over to lock it in place. Be very careful with this connection because it's very fragile. Install both fans back into the sockets. Secure them with the three Phillips head screws. Make sure to reconnect the fans. Once both fans are secure and plugged in, the logic board installation is finished. Main cover installation. Make sure that the lever is not locked. Place the cover on the MacBook. First, secure the one short Phillips head screw on the top left, then the three long Phillips head screws. Now install the four distinctly smaller identical screws on the bottom of the cover. Battery installation. Insert the battery at an angle and drop it into the socket. Place the cover back on and lock it in with the battery lever latch. <laughs> 